Hi guys, tonight I'm going to show you how to get the PX4 FMU board or the PX4 FMU and I.O. working together with the Graupner hot telemetry system so that you can transmit uh, vital autopilot data onto your transmitter's uh, LCD display. So at the moment we see here there's not a lot of information coming through, in fact none. And once we've set this up, you'll be getting information such as lipo voltage, altitude, temperature, and so on, showing on your uh, transmitter's display. Now to get this all working is pretty straightforward. Um, what you're going to need are the following things. Obviously you're going to need your PX4 autopilot, you're not going far without that. You're going to need a Graupner hot receiver such as this one, the GR16, there's a GR24, there's also a much smaller model called the GR12, you have to watch out for this one, this one you need to activate telemetry on, um, that's not on by default. And then of course you're going to need a transmitter. There are various uh, hot transmitters from Gartner, there's the MX20, this one here, there's also an MX16, or you can get the, the larger models, which is the MC20 and just recently the MC16. Important is that they're hot transmitters. Uh, this won't work with any of the other Graupner range. The other thing you're going to need is, of course, a cable. Uh, this is going to connect the transmitter, uh, sorry, the receiver here to the board that you're actually using and if you are going to be using the FMU IO combination it's best that you get something like this uh, this is a high rose five position connector and we'll look at this a little later how you use that and where it connects okay let's start off by looking at the PX4 FMU board and how we're going to connect that to the telemetry port on the GR16 here. Now as you can see we have the telemetry port on the end. It takes a normal servo connector but it only requires a single wire, the signal wire, that connects to the telemetry port here. Um, there are various ways that you can do this but let me just show you probably the simplest is you take a servo cable like this and what you can do is just we, what we want to do is, is keep the, uh, the top cable here. We want to get rid of ground and positive. So what you can do is just take a knife and just pop it in underneath these tabs here and pull the cable out like that. Do the same for the ground wire. Strip that off. And what we're left with is perfect telemetry cable which will fit in here just like that okay so we've connected our telemetry wire um, what we want to do now is of course connect it to the FMU board what we're going to do first of all is strip off the end here some of the insulation maybe a little more than that You're going to put some solder on. I'm not going to do that for this tutorial. Basically tin it. And what we're going to do then is we're going to connect it to the FMU board. Now there are two different ways you can do this. One way is soldering it directly to one of these pads here. So you'll be looking for uh, a, a USART port, USART 2, that's about the sixth from the bottom I think, and you're going to solder it directly to, to that pin, so you will solder it in there. So that's one way of doing it. The other way you can go about doing this is to take a pin, something like this, it's pretty common, you can get a right angled one like this, I have one, there's actually a straight one already prepared at the moment. 
sticks out a bit, it's not really the best. And then you can look up exactly which pin you want. Again, in uh, our case here, we're going to be using the USART 2 port. That's the sixth one in. Two, three, four, five, six, and in we go. Pop it in there. And then you can probably just remove it again and then solder this wire onto the pin and put some heat shrink over it too so it helps keep it in place. And then you have your connection. Simple as that. So let's move on to the FMU IO board. So it's going to be a little different on this one. Again, we're also going to be using the USART 2 port. The one that comes from the FMU board, which is the, the lower board here. This is the IO board. Um, but we don't have these headers free. We could also solder it onto the appropriate uh, pad here. But there's a nicer way of doing it. If you look at the IO board, this connector here is the USART 2 port that comes from the FMU through to the IO board. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a five position high res connector like this here and we're going to connect that wire there to the TX pin. I didn't mention that, that's very important. Uh, also if you're soldering it directly to the FMU board it has to go on to the TX pin, not the RX, so the outside one. So the way you're going to do that is I happen to know that it's pin number two on this one is the USART RX pin, the USART 2 RX pin. So when you get that connector, make sure you also get a bunch of these high rows uh, cables. They've already been pre crimped with the connectors on here. I'm going to take that, make sure we have it round the right way. And you simply push that in, like this, until you feel it click into place. Make sure it's nice and firm in there and doesn't slip out. Then you plug that in. Just push it in there. There we go. So, now we have a wire coming out of the TX port on the USART 2. Okay. The other end of this, as before, is going to connect to the receiver on the T port. Now I'm going to have to cut this off here and put a connector like this on or just solder it together. Whatever you want. Until you're done. So that's how it'll work for the FMU IO combination and much cleaner setup. Okay, so just to recap, what we've done now is we've connected our FMU board or FMU IO board from the USART 2 TX port to the receiver here on the telemetry port with a single cable. Uh, what we need to do now is to set up the transmitter. So let me move over to the display here and show you how to do that. It's quite straightforward. Basically what you want to do is go into the telemetry menu here, move down to sensor select, and what you need to do for the moment is to activate the electric air module. Later on we'll be getting you to activate uh, other ones, but for the moment just this one. Simple as that. Out you go. So now it should be ready. The next thing we need to do is to actually start the telemetry app on the uh, PX4. And the way you're going to do this is go to the startup script. So go to your, uh, grab your micro SD card and edit the RC file which is stored in the ETC directory, which you've probably already done by now. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to want to add this section in here, somewhere towards the bottom. 
I put it in right after everything else has started. You can see here we have GPS. Um, add this section. This is the important line here. Hot underscore telemetry start. If you do not want to use USART2, uh, which is slash dev slash ttys1, this is the default setting, you can override this by putting in a minus D and then the device number. So, for example, slash dev slash tty s2. This will be usart5, uh, which will also work. You can also use other ports, um, but they tend to be used for other things, such as GPS or communication with the I.O. board, if you have one of those. usart2 is something which should be about the safest to use in all cases. So once you've put that in there, save your file. I'm going to take this off because I'm sticking with the default value. And then we're ready to boot up uh, the PX4 board. So we're ready to test things now. I've updated the startup script on the SD card and put that in. Uh, everything is wired up. And all I need to do now is apply power. As you can see, the transmitter is not receiving anything at the moment, so the telemetry display is essentially off. I'm using an external power supply. What I'm going to do now is connect the power. You can watch the LCD display here as I turn things on and very shortly you'll see data coming across. So there we have it. Uh, now we have telemetry data coming across from the PX4. As you can see at the moment it's sending the, um, the voltage, 11.4 volts. Uh, at the moment, this is being supplied by an external power supply, but that would be your uh, LiPo. Uh, the current altitude is measured by the barometer that's on board, 289 meters, and the temperature, 37 degrees Celsius, which is actually the internal receiver's uh, uh, temperature that's coming from the receiver. Uh, what you can also do, of course, is switch on a uh, voice trigger, so you can choose what information you want to actually hear. Uh, while you're flying, which can be very useful if you want to keep track of the voltage or altitude GPS information. Input voltage 11.4 volts. For example, voltage. So there you have it. Um, as you can see at the moment, uh, things such as current is, is zero. Our support for that hasn't been added. That's coming um, very soon now, just in the process of uh, hooking that up, as well as uh, GPS data. So if you're out on the field and you don't want to bring your laptop with you but still want you know, important information uh, available to you, um, or if you're flying alone and you don't want to be constantly looking at your laptop, uh, where of course you can get all this data and more, uh, there's a very practical way uh, of getting it. So if you've got a Graupner hot telemetry system, uh, give it a go. See you later.